And we are the Redmonds. Welcome to another edition of our show, Meet the Redmonds, where we'll be discussing all things about Christian love and marriage in a fun but lighthearted way. Today we're going to discuss an excerpt, a chapter from our book, Finally I Do Again. It is at redmondprojects.com. You can see that address on the bottom of the screen. You can go there, click shop, and purchase your book today. You can also find our other book. We wrote one before that. Yes, Revelations of a Real Man or Woman. But today's chapter, we're going to deal with space, the final frontier. That title sounds familiar. That's one of the uh, phrases in the opening monologue of Star Trek, the original series, which I am a huge fan of. Huge is an understatement. And the, the monologue, I think, goes... Uh, space, the final frontier, uh, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Mm -hmm. And that is what basically the journey of our marriage has been. We're boldly going where no man or woman has gone before. And how does that pertain to our marriage? Well, space. We're not just talking about physical space. Yeah. We're also talking about emotional space, mm -hmm. spiritual space. Yes. Personal space. Absolutely. Uh, just all kinds of spaces. All kinds of spaces. <laughs> yes. We got married in 2015, mm -hmm. and immediately we had to do what we call a merge. There was a show back in the day on Lifetime when the do-it-yourself makeover era started going, and it would be two couples who were, not two couples, two people who would come together and they would have to bring their space into one, under one roof, and what it took to live together. In that case, they were talking about physical space, but in marriage, what we are finding out over these last seven years, that space comes in different forms. Absolutely. I, the Bible verse, there's a Bible verse that says, a man that findeth a, a wife, a wife findeth a good thing. Good thing. Yes. But, what that verse left out is that you find a good wife, but she's got to bring all the stuff along with her. Or he has to bring all of his stuff. It also says that you obtain favor from the Lord because you have me. Okay. Okay. Well, let's make sure we put the Bible verse and the, where it's found at the bottom of the screen. They know how we do it. We will make sure they're taken okay. care of. Yes. Well segue in, into that mm -hmm. um, when we first got married we had some decisions to make uh, Beverly had her own home mm -hmm. and I had a home in Chicago and we had to decide what, what, what would we do would we move to Indianapolis or yes. Bloomington to make, our, make it our home mm -hmm. or would we move to Chicago now, I know there's some old school purist out there that's going to say, well, the wife is supposed to go where the husband goes and blah, 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 blah. That may be true. And if that's for you, that's for you. That's for you. Yes. But we decided that we would kind of merge our, our lives together and make our home in Chicago. Yes. Um, an interesting story behind all of that is for a long time, I didn't think Beverly owned her own home. He thought I was making this up because my parents lived with me. He thought I was living with my parents. Well, you didn't tell me out front. I just opened the door and said, welcome. It wasn't up for a discussion. But yes, it was my home. Long story short, I did some investigative studying, some, what do they call it, oppositional research. He saw a bill on the table with my name on it. Oppositional research. And I found out that her home was indeed her home. Yes. <laughs> Which, it was kind of, I, I was in a uh, precarious spot because you built your home from the ground up. This was your baby. It, I loved, L-O-V-E, heart. Loved building that home and loved the idea of moving my parents there. It had been a lifelong dream of mine to give my parents a space and to have them to be with me. So I felt kind of, you know, here I am. That means I gotta up, upheave everybody's 
life. Parents have to move. You have to move. Garage sales. Uh, goodwill giveaways. I, I felt really... There I was in my feelings for a minute. There were treadmills. I had closets. Plural. Closets of things that needed to be moved. And yes, my parents... They were going to be moving toward Indianapolis where I have a sister. Her name's Angela. Hey, Angie. She is a deaf American and uh, they needed to get closer to her. So all of the timing actually did work out. So any feelings of discomfort or angst that you were having, I hope that subsided. Yeah, it did. And um, just the move was just, oh boy, we had to load up two U-Hauls. And, and, and the trip, we had to drive, and, and we had to get movers to move once we got to Chicago, and then we had to consolidate some things in Chicago. So it was just a, a, a hectic time for us. It was more than a hectic time because I was still working in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Even after we made the move with all my physical things, I still was behind in Indiana finishing up work there. Still had some months to go, so there was some juggling. I moved in with my sister. So we did a lot of commuting back and forth, and it was uh, not ideal, but it was in my heart to want to come to Chicago. And for those traditionalists, those purists, as you said, that want to follow or, or the wife should follow, that was in my heart, not because I couldn't see another or more modern way to do it, but because we had children. We have two kiddos, Noel and Kelsey. Kelsey's the oldest, Noel is the youngest. They were still in their formative years and I just did not want that to separate and to have you trying to come from Chicago to Indianapolis and back to Chicago when they absolutely still needed your presence right there. And what my wife just said is a preview to another episode called Blended. And that is just merging you with two teenage kids mm -hmm. and, and becoming a, a, a whole family unit. So yeah. that's a right. another episode for another day. But... <laughs> What really, is there any kind of, did you seek any kind of, of, of spiritual guidance in making your decision to come to Chicago? I'm going to say yes, in the fact that I always petition the Lord, I'm always prayerful, but I was very resolute early on mm -hmm. that that was a, a non-negotiable for me. When I knew that you had children when I met them and I knew that we were going to be a part of each other's lives, it, it, it's just a part of who I am. And I would not be content if I had to make you travel back and forth. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, when you hear the word space and giving up space, what does that mean to you? Not just the physical space, because we... We just elaborated on what you had to give up. Right. What other things did you have to give up? Um, for a while, I had to give up a portion of my career. Um, moving to Chicago, we had to make room for me and time for me to learn the area, to get to know the Chicago area, and then put down some roots. What I didn't know is that it would mean more than a year of being off of a job. So it was more like a year and a half. It was a, it was a it good was little a minute. a good little stretch. Often we have a, a red HP computer laptop. Um, Methuselah. <laughs> She's old. She, really old. She was one of my first laptops that I ever had and made her journey into our marriage. But when I look back on some of the files, I probably had close to 100 resumes out there. A lot of job searching was going on. It was constant. There were some yeses. There were some, some no's. I would get pretty far in the job search process, and then it would go straight to cold. You would get that denial. So I needed that space to figure out who I was, again, career-wise, too. So space... 
means a lot of different things. What about for you? But getting back to what you just said, you also needed a break. You 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 had been grinding hard. You had been helping me transition back into the health and vitality. So you really needed a break. So that year and a half that you were off, you got some well-deserved rest. I'm only chuckling because Mark is absolutely uh, traditional at heart. So he probably never ate so well in our marriage as he did when I was off for that year and a half. He had home-cooked meals for breakfast. I would, I did the whole deal the whole, from breakfast, lunch, call in the middle of the day while he was at work. What time are you going to be home? All of those things. So I, I spoiled him a little bit and then went, when I went back to work. If you all remember previous episodes, I mentioned one of the reasons why I fell in love with Beverly was her tortellini soup. That's when I got introduced to it. I was hooked. And again, one, one of these episodes, we're going to give you the recipe out there okay. to the tortellini soup. When I say it's fire, it's fire. Poof. It was just one of those things. If you get the base of the soup right, you can make several different things. He loves a, a lemon chicken rice, that tortellini soup. So all you right, make right, sure stop. that happens. You're making, you're making me all great right now. And I don't think I'm cooking after this episode. But, <laughs> but one of the things I had to give up was, or I had to make space for, was just incorporating you into... Now, our home, and like Beverly said, I'm very uh, a traditionalist at heart, so I like my things a certain way, and I had to learn, I have to give up some things because this is her home now, and she makes, she sets the tone, and I just truly believe that a woman, a godly woman, sets the tone for the home. The demeanor, the decorum, the calmness, the peace. Okay. So I, I had to really set aside my traditionalist values and say, okay, let her do what she needs to do to make this space her own. Now, it was some physical things I had to give up. Now, my home has plenty, had, H-A-D, plenty of closets, plenty of closet space. But here comes Beverly. With the what was the 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 woman that was the dictator? Amel DeMarcos. Yes. Uh, you you new schoolers don't know who she is. Google her. But this woman had was notorious for shoes and dresses. She was she was well known for her shoe wardrobe. And um, I'm not saying that I admire her at all. But your shoe game is vicious. Yes, it I, is. I do love shoes. I love looking put together. I still get emails and texts from shoe places saying, <laughs> does your wife want to buy another pair of shoes? So I had to make room for closets and, and dresses and shoes. And it was just, I was like, wow, I got to give up all of this. So in return, we had to balance out. That doesn't mean I could take over every place and every, we had to come up with rotations that at certain points, we'd have to clean out closets and give away a lot of things. Now, I know Mark is talking about my love for shoes, but my darling husband loves fashion as well. It doesn't necessarily show up by our uniform today. The, the Redmond Polos, <laughs> hot to death. <laughs> doesn't show like that today. But we do love some clothes in the Redmond household. Thank the Lord that he has provided that. And it can be done within budget and in a friendly way to our to our finances. But uh, we had to make room for each other. So coming in, I couldn't just take the whole house over. You pretty much did. You, know what I did. you took the upstairs bedroom closets, both bedrooms, the hallway closet, the closet by the door, the closet by the basement. Now, if I go in those closets today, Mark is exaggerating. No, I'm not. Mark has plenty of space. Yes. But not just physical space. We also had to give each other personal space. Yes. Um, elaborate on that. 
Personal space means, at least for me, I thrive in peace and calm. And I do, after working a day or after doing a lot of things, I do just like to go and sit and be peaceful. I also have to give Mark his areas and his space. Uh, in our Chicago residence, there's a beautiful recliner that sits in the basement it's it's got all kinds the of captain's buttons. chair. All, it is uh, a thing. <laughs> but you know what? Any any man that is a man and, and, and loves his home, he has that own. He has his personal. You have your man cave, right? You're not just your man cave, but you got that seat at the table. That is his seat. Mm -hmm. Mine happens to be my recliner downstairs. Yes, that is the seat of all action from the remote to dining. When Mark wants to just go and chill out, he's in that basement area in his captain's chair, just maxing. But another aspect of space is also letting that person that has come into your space find their lane, find what's comfortable for them. And I think we're going to get into reading some excerpts from the book. Okay. I think you're going to start off first with your part talking about... Um, what are we talking about? No, no, the excerpt from the book when uh -huh. you read, talking about uh, it's not your ministry. No, I don't think I'm going to do it's not your ministry. When it comes to space, what have you learned in terms of making that adjustment with someone new in your life? Well, I have to learn that you have to take your time, that you learn how to get your, your bearings about yourself on your own. Funny story, when Beverly first came to Chicago, now in Indianapolis and in Indiana, uh, Bloomington, they make U-turns at the drop of a hat. <laughs> so my wife and our daughter, Noel, they're going down State Street in Chicago, which is one of the main thoroughfares in the city. And Beverly decides to bust a U-turn in the middle of the street. And my daughter was like, yo, hey, you can't do that. So. But I had to learn those things. Mm -hmm. And I still do think from time to time a U-turn is just necessary for life. But I had to learn those things about Chicago. You kind of had to be that guide on the side and not always the one to show me I had to go. Mm -hmm. and, and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, you ready? Yep, go ahead. All right, so this is an excerpt from Space the Final Frontier, and it, I am going to correct myself, I did go back, and it is under the section of hers, and it's not my ministry. So, I told you I was right, people. Sometimes he is. That's part of Space 2, letting people have their own path and figuring things out. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Not my ministry is really code about each person in the union staying in his, her lane and playing to their strengths. I may think I'm B. Smith, who was affectionately known as the Black Martha Stewart. She sows and goes into her garden to pick her own collard greens, but reality, I fail miserably at both. Asked my sister Carla about the time I tried to sew a button on my suit. It was very, a very sad experience. Or talk to my husband about who takes care of mom and dad, our plants in the living room window. I have killed a cactus. He is the one with the green thumb in our household. Compromising and mixing up traditional roles may not work for everyone, but I considered getting married at the age of 45 to a man wanting a second chance at love, a very non-traditional experience. Making room in our home was only the first step, but the final frontier in space is all mental. We had to make room in our hearts and our minds for each other. Saying it is easy, but it is a whole nother thing when the U-Haul pulls up and unloads. All notions and ideals are tested, but I can laugh on the other side of things. There are some pretty funny influences that happen on the road of two becoming one. Mom and dad were some plants that we got 
at my mother's funeral, her home going. And I just affectionately named them mom and dad after my parents. And I would tend to these plants and water them and nurture them. And Beverly just had the hardest time <laughs> just watering them. Yes. And my poor babies, I would come home and I, they didn't get any water and I would just be so outdone. But then I learned, hey, that's not her ministry. No, I, I don't. I have a fern on my desk at work. And I have to consciously put it in my heart and mind to go and water her all the time. It brings me joy to see plants around, but I don't have a green thumb at all. But that goes back to what, I, what we were saying about staying in your lane. Mm -hmm. I am affectionately called king of the block back home because I have one of the nicest yards. Self-proclaimed. Doesn't matter. Yes. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I have one of the better yards on the block. We but do. I take a lot of time into my yard. I like it cut a certain way. I like my flowers. And that's my lane. That's where I find my peace. Mm -hmm. And I would feel a certain kind of way if I came home and found you just, you know, digging in my flowers <laughs> or cutting my grass. Well, in our marriage, um, I don't know that it's traditional, but since I'm not a horticulturalist and I also don't like to be hot, Mowing the lawn, on Mark's terms, is perfectly okay with me. Mm -hmm. uh, one, the other thing we had to give up, oh, the thermostat. That's a good one. Uh, we're, I'm sure we're not the only married couples that fight mm -hmm. over who wants it cold or who wants it hot. When we talk about space, is sometimes we have a lot of our own traditions in our mind that we may have picked up from our parents or from other relationships. You're going to have to make some time and space just to form a new way of doing things. We call ours the Redmond way. You will call yours something else or do call your routine something else, but it is putting aside all the other stuff and just making sure that you make life for the two of you or your household in a way that is conducive for you. Okay, that's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, we also had to make space for our children. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a constant juggle. Yeah. Because they're now adults. When when we started out... And they still think they have space. They, and they do. They, they do. And they do, they do, they do. Uh, and they deserve that space. But making time for them is also making space. As they become more into their adulthood or going further in as being adults, they still want to be close in their kind of way. And in fact, they seem to need you a little bit more or differently than when they did when they were kids. And as young kids, you're doing a lot for them. Now we don't have to take care of their day to day, but they still want to be right there. Especially that daughter of ours, Noelle. She will get in her feelings, particularly if she doesn't speak to you. Yes. When she speaks to me, it's, you know, dad, blah, 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 you know, but Beverly, the wise sage, she really wants to speak to you. And when she doesn't get a hold of you, she gets into her feelings. Because we have become good friends as well as stepmom, stepdaughter. And I take that as a huge compliment. Even at a distance where we are in Seattle and they're back home in Chicago or in the surrounding area of Chicago, making sure that we're connected is very, very important. Making space for family. At the end of the day, when we leave this life and we go on to heaven, that's our goal. No one's ever going to say, I wish I had another spreadsheet. I wish I had another book signing to go to. It's all about the, the memories and the relationships that you will leave behind. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're still forging our own space. We had to make room for our lives here in Seattle. Yes. And that is another story within itself, just making space. You want to tell a little bit about it? Well, fortunately, we are almost out of time. Well, not unfortunately, we're almost out of time. You didn't get a chance to read your excerpt. But we got to do it next week. We have to come back with a space part two. We've been here for 27 minutes? 27. Going on 28. 
So time has flown quickly. But wait a minute. I got to go with my joke of the day. Uh-oh. Got a joke of the day. And this is a good one, people. A good one. You ready? I don't know, but we're going ahead. Go ahead. Give me a three-letter word that starts with gas. A three-letter word that starts with gas. This seems very simple. Like, I should know the answer, but I, I'm going to say, what is a three-letter word that starts with gas? You, you give up? I do. Ready? I'm not sure. <laughs> Car. A car. Get it? A car, three-letter word that starts with gas. Get it, people? Dun, dun. No, here we go. Shazam! <laughs> Boom! I got them again, people. So, again, we're going to leave you now with our catchphrase, and hopefully next week we'll be able to do Space Part 2. Or we'll, we may not do the whole episode of Space, but we may give a couple of more more examples. Right, I may get a chance to read my excerpt. Yep. Okay, so, remember, it's not her way. It's not his way. It's the, the Redman way. way. Peace and blessings. Bye, everybody.